there's nothing like the promise of spring to galvanise that resolve to get your house in order and for me, my garden. If, like me, we were looking to beautify your growing space while maximising yields, then I've got a few ideas that just might help you. Hi, I'm Ben. With sowing and planting time just about to kick off, it's time to take things up a notch. Join me as I take my vegetable garden to the next level. It's time to pimp my garden. Right, the first job is to get on and replace this old bed here. It served me well, but you can see the sides are coming away. I'm going to replace it with a new pallet collar bed like this and put another one here so I get nice pleasing lines of symmetry and it all lines up. Let's uh, dig all this out, put all the old soil and compost there so I can use it to part fill the new beds and um, there's some parsnips in here too which I'm going to harvest. So as you can see, I'm using these pallet collars. I've roughly positioned them so they're all nice and um, even with the paths. I've now got to dig them into the slope of the hill to get them nice and level. I've got a spirit level for that purpose. I love these pallet collars because they're very convenient. They're instant. You just plonk them into position and they keep everything nice and tidy and it fits in with what I've got already. So let us get on and get them nice and level. Great, there's one bed done. Now let's get the second bed dug in and levelled up. The first half of our beds are filled with the soil that was already there. It's great stuff, but I've got in this fresh delivery of mushroom compost to give everything a really good boost. And I'll put some more on the other beds too. Oh, it's got a beautiful earthy smell. It's so tactile and full of goodness. You know it's gonna work its wonders. So let's get on and fill the barrow up and get it over to our beds. The beds are nice and filled and levelled off and they look fantastic, don't they? Beautiful. Just a quick word about using mushroom compost. It's great for planting plug plants into, but not so great for germination. That's fine. I'm gonna start my plants off in little plugs and pots and then plant them in here. So that's all good. But if you are going to sow direct, maybe finish off by capping with a layer of ordinary compost. Something we're all guilty of is forgetting to actually sit back and enjoy our gardens. Well, I'm determined to do something about that this year. Now, take a look here between these beds. We've got a beautiful line of sight going back here to this spot here. So I think what should go in here is a beautiful garden bench so I can sit back and admire my hard work. The bench I've chosen to go in this spot includes an integral arbour to grow plants over and it stands at just under two metres or seven foot tall. So to allow for that extra height, I'm just going to have to do a bit of cutting back so it can stand here unhindered. There's also this rhubarb in the way here. It was only planted in the autumn, but it won't matter. I'll just replant it elsewhere and it'll soon take off. Now the fun part, let's start assembling it. That's the seat all attached now. I'm just gonna put it upright and then dig it in so it's nice and level using the spirit level again. There we are, that's the bench all done and level. And now for the arbor. That's the bench and arbor completed and now it's time to get on with some planting. I've cleared the area behind the bench, which was a bit overgrown, ready to plant some fruit bushes. But first, let's get on and plant something to grow over this arbour. 
So what I've chosen to grow up the trellis on the side of the arbor here is this Japanese wineberry. It's closely related to the raspberry and it's a native of Japan, parts of China and Korea. What I really love about it are these intensely red stems with little tiny spines up them. The fruits themselves are dark, dark red and intensely sweet and delicious. And it's really hardy. It'll climb very well up this trellis and hopefully reach the top as well. And the great thing is it has these red stems all year round. So it's going to be providing winter colour as well. Let's get it planted. I uh, went to a fascinating talk at the weekend on food forests or forest gardening, which is where you mimic the forest environment in the garden while creating something delicious to eat. So here I thought I'd do something similar. I've got this big old apple tree here that overhangs. I've knocked it back a bit, but then I can plant some fruit bushes, some currants, and then later on in the season, some herbs and perhaps some comfrey to weave in between it all. First job though is to cover the ground with cardboard to help suppress those weeds and then I'll top it all off with some uh, bark chippings. When using this method of smothering weeds you want to make sure that the cardboard is nice and thick, nice and natural, free of any tape or staples and that you get a good overlap between the pieces. That way there's no light can get in and those weeds don't stand much of a chance. You have to admit there's something strangely satisfying about it all being covered with cardboard, but now it's time to get the wheelbarrow and shovel on those bark chippings before we can get planting. Oh. So I've chosen currants for this area. Currants do prefer full sun, but they'll give a crop in dappled shade. This area is fairly shady, especially with the apple tree ahead, but crucially it gets plenty of summer sunshine in the afternoon, precisely when these berries will be ripening. So I've got a good feeling about this. I'm just going to peel back all the bark chippings, cut a hole in the cardboard and then plant them. That's all the currants planted. I now just need to cut them back to about two inches or five centimeters from the ground. This area directly behind the bench and arbor and underneath the apple tree is probably the shadiest spot. So I think the rhubarb I dug up would be fine here. It'll romp away big generous leaves and fill out this space quite nicely I reckon. There's a few more things I wanted to show you that I'm going to plant into the bed around the currants a bit later on in spring once they've grown on a bit. These are plants that I started back in the autumn um, from cuttings and also bulbs for our perennial vegetables video. I'll pop a link to that down below. So you can see they've grown on really well. This is perennial kale looking really good. So that will go out probably mid spring. And then I've also got these beautiful Babington's leek, a type of perennial leek. So I'm going to have these sort of flowing around, maybe in between the currants. Really beautiful. I had some of those wood chips left over, so I've topped up around the paths to give it all a fresh look. Now we've got a beautiful line of sight to this bench arbor here. So what I reckon would really cap it off is a vegetable arch just here and one between these two beds here. The arches are to replace an earlier arch that I had behind me here, which I took down in the autumn. Just like that one, this will be used to grow climbing vegetables like uh, beans and maybe sort of climbing squash, those kind of things. I think it's going to look absolutely stunning with the beans all dripping down from the top. It's going to be a real feature. 
I'm really loving the extra height that the arches are already bringing to the garden. I've also got four of these obelisks as well. I'm going to put two in this bed, which will have um, trailing squash trained up them. Then one in here for cucumbers. And then one in here. I've not decided what to grow up here yet, but possibly vining tomatoes. Before we go any further, I just wanted to bring you in to have a look at my garden plan here. It's really coming together. You can see the two arches here, the obelisks, and the bench with the arbor. And of course, I've planned out all the crops already. I'm so excited. It's all coming together, and I can't wait to see it come to fruition. Something you don't often see in shot is the trampoline here. Even I like to have the occasional bounce, but it doesn't exactly scream beautiful kitchen garden. So I've invested in these terracotta pots, which I'm going to plant with a beautiful swishing and swaying bamboo. Rather sadly, this tree here has died. It's not particularly big, so I'm going to leave it where it is to rot down naturally for all the bugs to enjoy. So to replace it, I've got a beautiful dwarf apple tree here. It's called Lord Lambourne, that's the variety. I've got an apple tree to my right here, so this will create a very miniature orchard in this corner here. Well, that's the bare bones of the garden in place. All we need now is to wait for spring to arrive. I've still got these raspberries to put in, but to be honest with you, I'm absolutely zonked. So that's gonna to have to wait for another day. Now, if you'd like to see this garden evolve and reach its full splendor, then, well, you're gonna to have to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of our future garden tours. Now, I'd love to know what you're up to in your garden. Are you going to be pimping your garden or just tidying it up at the edges? Let me know what you're up to down below. Thanks so much for watching. Happy gardening, and I will catch you next time.